Welcome back to Thronebreaker here on Serious Gaming. Assault the Nilfgaardians, break through their lines, and win the war. Well, Nilfgaard is an army, a formidable force that cannot be stopped. All right, we deploy. Scrubbing duty again? Oh, God! An elf guardian champion. Ow! A promising recruit, you say? All right, so I deployed one of my arbalists. He's deployed Alba Pikeman. And then. Rabbit the white of an eye from half a league away. And take it out. No pikes for you, mate. Is this all that Nilfgaard has? Alright then. Gascon. And just when you thought things were about to get dull. And Knickers. the turn alright then One right and then take them all out well minus the impera enforcer veterans army's a waste of time for one like me All right then. Veterans, you say. What do you want of me? Okay. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Take them out. Using the strays. Oh, oh, Lady Margarita told us of this. Okay. To me, Nicker says stolen my cards. Got in yourself nice and fat, haven't you, boy? All right, there's not much Nilfgaard can do at this point. Expro except for the fucking Alba division at me. Lore wise, by the way, the Impera should be uh, should all be with Emir in the sap in the capital. There are several thousands of them. Very well, the best of the best of the Empire. Queen Eve approaches Re R Rivia. You believe that you can hide. Hold on. Oh, there. By the looks of it. What the hell? Oh, other side, I suppose. It's 
been a long and brutal fight. What is this? Okay, before I go south, I should clear out here. What else could there be? Meave needed but set one foot into the Ruwode to know something was amiss. The sickening stench of rot hung in the air. Flies swarmed in thick clouds and crows cawed in a deafening cacophony. What had caused this murder to amass? Well, Neve's scouts soon found out. Your Majesty. Reported a certain Sergeant Nadamur. Not far from here, past the bend, there's a cutting and it's full of bodies. Our boys in the black clouds alike. Bodies mutilated, horribly so, guts ripped up, entrails strewn about, heads locked. Somewhere, well, I... yes, branches embrace him, grip him tight as if the trees they, they strangled him. Hearing this, the queen ordered a halt to their march. They would go no further, she thought, till they knew what had killed those men. Luckily, witnesses were soon found. A haggard band of resin burners emerged from a nearby dugout, black with dirt, covered in dried blood. Milady. Their eldest stammered. Blackings came and started felling the wood. Force folk to chop away to make way for a town, they said. They pushed hard right to the heart of the forest where the old oaks grow and awoke some foulness. I, 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 the old, old camp. Black clads and loggers alike. Done in one night. No time even to draw their weapons. We was lucky. Found pits to hide in. Just heard of something huffed and puffed while talking to the trees, no less. Reynard ordered medics to tend to the tar makers, then turned to Meave. We cannot wash our hands of this, Your Grace. The Nilfgaardians Guardians awoke the monster, yes, but it kills Rivians just as readily. Meave stood at the edge of the clearing and pricked her ears. The Ruwod echoed with the cawing of crows, which seemed to perch on its every twig. She also heard the howling of wolves, and a hollow rattling, as if branches whipped in the wind, though the day was fair and still. That Geralt, he just had to desert me. The Queen removed her cloak to avoid snags, and trundled toward the heart of the wood. Her soldiers followed, clutching cocked crossbows to sweaty cheeks, Thank ye, your majesty. You'll protect us from them black. We took. Thank ye. All right. Freefold. What the hell? Is that so? All right. Here we go. An elf guardian camp over there, battle over there. Two battles one after another. Um I guess might be, might not be. Deep in the wood, it grew cool, with a thin fog filling the air. Meave pushed past a large branch of hazel and froze. Before her stood a tall figure, nearly human in form, save the moss-covered deer skull in place of its head. 
empty eye sockets burning with naked flame. The monstrosity hurled itself at Meave with a roar. Rally to me! cried Meave, raising her shield. Everyone! Anyone! To me! A lesson. Eliminate the lesson. As expected, though. When dealing with such creatures in the woods. This will do. Be wary. We know not what this thing can do. Oh, Father. What have we got ourselves into this time? Whenever they need to take them, deal bonus, but okay. Well, this is a wonderful situation, isn't it? One gold. All right. A fascinating specimen. I must study it once we're finished. I Let love stone knock out one of your teeth. All right. Well. Well, I hope you enjoy this. At least it's taking a lot of damage, right? Left, right, left, right. Again and again and again. <laughs> Alright. Well, crossbows are very useful here. It's taking a lot of extra damage per hit. The chase is on! That Make will do. love, not war. <laughs> Wait, you're serious? As you wish, my lady. All right, it's still taking extra damage. Abolista, your command. Oh, I might just be able to win. Yeah. Lesson is dead, I guess. Believe it's dead. Whatever that means for such a thing. Oh. We we may never know, right? Attacked from all sides, the monster teetered and swayed, fighting off their blows with ever greater difficulty. Finally, it fell to the ground and fell apart, like an undone bundle of twigs. In disbelief, Meave towed the pile of dried branches and scraps of bark. She saw no blood, no entrails, as if no monster had ever stood there. As if it had all been a dream. We return to the road, Meave said, 
crushing the beast's deer-like skull under her heel. Ah, and Reynard, I have a request. Yes, Your Grace? Once we regain the realm and return to the capital, remind me to issue an edict. No one is to enter these woods, not to log nor even to gather brush. Just in case. Those dwelling near the Ruwode heaved a sigh of relief, and the Lyrians returned to fighting an invader who, after what they'd faced in those woods, no longer seemed so frightening. Well, yeah, after after the, an episode like this, I imagine the Nilfgaardian hordes would seem minor in comparison. Fuck, after the m madness of Angren, I'd say that the Lyrians are a brutal army. I mean, keep in mind what the Lyrians did. They fought monsters while constantly retreating, by, followed by three entire Nilfgaardian regiments constantly being hounded by the Nilfgaardians for the swamps, for all that muck and disease-filled land. And then, then they found themselves assaulting a bridge. Unnumbered, tired, exhausted, and a sodding one. Yes, with the help of a Witcher and Kahir, but still. A victory, a phenomenal victory, is still a phenomenal victory. So after all that, well, I'd say Nilfgaard Woodland Spirit. How f sounding lovely. Again and again and again. Bloodthirsty Algo. An army's a waste of time for one like me. I've hit the white of an eye from half a league away. Sweat like a swine in that jacket. All right, my dog is here. All right, good victory. At least this first turn. Wanna know why I got my scar? No, I just want you to die gloriously. Ah, damn it, Neckers. Neckers is gone. Left, right, left, right. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. All right. Maybe I should stop at this point. One bolt's all I need. The monsters are not going to be a problem. But I guess I could just continue to ensure I win this turn. Give me a target. Ah! All right. 
just four more cards. <laughs> Wait, you're serious? Just a boy gas gun. He'll deliver. Yeah. Alright. Damn, he's got a lot of elder bears. Am I fighting monsters or the wildlife? Guess a little bit of both. Or the monsters are the wildlife. Alright. Well, that's uh, progress. Hmm, a robust rain hither comes. Hold on. By stone. Stone by two towers. I mean, all right. Okay, so there's... It might be here. Here as well, possibly. There are multiple locations based on what I can see. I'm not gonna stress it out right now. By the looks of things, there's plenty of forts. I accept their deal. Seems reasonable. A broken trebuchet. But what was it aimed at? Oh dear. This place is an unending nightmare. Just keeps on giving. All right, next puzzle. Let's see. Combine at least three identical uh, cards in order to damage the wyvern. Use it, your leader's ability. Huh.
Machine reaction. I mean, yeah, the puzzles are whatever. The issue is the issue I the uh, the major issue I have with this game is although I, I absolutely fucking love the story, I think there's some wonderful characters, and I think it's a vastly superior story to the piece of crap that we got with The Witcher Three. Uh, there's some interesting characters, decisions, consequences, every moral dilemmas, etc. You know, everything that Witcher 3 fucking lacks. But anyway, outside of that... <clears throat> uh, outside of that particular aspect, though, what I dislike is that it's... Like, all this collectible crap on the open world map is just padding the length. Hmm. I gotta lose some men. I have a lot. I have men to spare. Or as per Avengers, we have blood to spare. <laughs> nice piece of propaganda, really. Neve arrived at the walls of Gradobor, famed for fine rugs and woven tapestries. The city's artisans had been at work, no doubt pressed by the Nilfgaardians, for atop the tallest spire, that of the town hall, flapped a lustrous ebony flag, a sun of golden threads at its center. So vast was the banner, Gascon whistled in admiration. <whistles> Got to admit. The Black Clads certainly have panache. And a vast and powerful army, I'd remind you, Reynard interjected. Arblists line the walls. That stench in the air, hot tar. And our scouts claim the Black Clads stand armed to the hilt with the best Mahakam has to offer. Victory's not likely to come cheap, I fear. No cost is too high, said Meave, a hardness in her voice. Reynard, Gascon, ready our men to attack. The Lyrians needed no more encouragement. Since arriving, they had reveled in anticipation of taking the city, then ripping the banner from its spire. We shall have a new banner flying over this year city soon enough. This is Rivia, not fucking Nilfgaard. Oh, I'm a Nilfgaardian for the bone, by the way. Supporter of Nilfgaard and all that. Meave is like the first Northern Monarch in any of the games or any of the mediums that I was like, yeah. She's not as bad as the other shits that ruled the Northern Realms. It will be difficult, Your Grace. The walls are strong. I mean, actually, to to be honest with you, like the issue I have with the games is actually far less so, uh, or rather, the issue I have with ah! the Northern Monarchs is actually far less so Never with. Uh, score, knock out one of your teeth. Yeah, it's far less so about the leaders of them. It's more so the prejudice, racism, the backwardness and all that. It certainly leaves a lot to be desired. I don't see the reason why I should fight for the North, whatever the, mean, the hell that means. I mean, even now, even with all of this, I legitimately do not see a justification. Someone's opening the gate! What the Forward, fuck? march! Okay. Me? Okay. Who the hey, hell's open the gate? 
I mean, it's made my left, life easier. Right, left, right. Yeah. Go on, then, Into the city, then. Kill the North Guardians. One vote's all I need. As you wish, my lady. Of course, the North Guardians are pretty brutal fuckers themselves, mind you. In many respects, from their usage of the Scoia'tael, knowing exactly, come on. Do you think the Nilf Guardians are innocent in the usage of the Scoia'tael? No, they knew exactly who they'd made their bed with. I hope you're satisfied, dog. Hope it was very much worth it, really. The white of an eye from half a league away. All right. There's no way he can win. Unless he pulls like an emperor and forces are out of his fucking. Just when you thought things were about to get dull. Well, generally things don't get dull that easily, do they? If he's gonna pull a fucking Impera out really of his like ass. This one. Well. Give me a time. <laughs> Alright. Quite a few Imperas, I see. Damn, is he just made up of fucking Paris? Alright. Victory, your grace! The city is ours! Alright. Permanent resilience. The battle for Gradobor was a hard fight. Though not quite as hard as most had thought it might be. During the assault, at its critical juncture, a blow fell from the blue. The unlikely heroes. Merchants and burghers brought together by the city's guilds. A wave of them, all riled, swarmed the blackclads at the gates and opened them wide to let Lyria in. Onward! Follow me! As fighting died down around the city, Meave rode for the town hall on a personal quest. Nilfgaard's vast, garish banner rippled overhead. With its halyard cut, it plunged like a great black bird stricken. It was the last any would see of the golden sun over Gradobor. Three cheers! Hip, hip, hooray! The Lyrians were victorious, though not without aid. Meave met with the merchants who had roused the townsfolk, inspired them to rise up and fight. Many of my soldiers, dozens, perhaps hundreds, owe you their lives today, said the Queen. For that I am deeply grateful. No, deeply indebted. Should you know a way I might repay the debt, don't for a moment hesitate to ask. The merchants exchanged glances, nodded, grunted, agreed with each other without uttering a word. Then one, a cloth fuller, his moustache most robust, stepped forth, bowed low, and spoke for them all. Your Majesty, the invaders brought laws, laws what don't agree with customs we've long held. Non-humans they forced us to accept, let them join our guilds, sit on the city council. It's right ridiculous it is. These treacherous dwarves, why, they've been on their side from the start, so it's no wonder. But, well, the Nilfgaardian reforms, we'd like you to revoke them. Non-humans must know their place. An awkward silence ensued. All turned their eyes to the queen, awaiting her response. Of course they'd ask for something like this. No. I agree. Non-humans must know their place. Began the Queen. So listen closely all. Whether elf, dwarf, gnome or human, it matters not. My subjects are equal. Your Grace, you said it thy said. Were it not for us... My troops would have died, true. 
Yet among the dead, there'd have been dwarves of Mahakam, I've no doubt. Dwarves who agreed to fight by my side when none believed I could prevail. The tradesman huffed, the tradesman puffed. Meave silenced them with a firm swipe of her hand. She left Gradabor that very day, furious at the city's merchants for their bigotry, and irked at an unpleasant truth, that even the vile Nilfgaardians occasionally got something right. Oh, they got more than something occasionally right, believe me. They got a lot of things right. A lot. They're not the superpower of this world for no reason. What the hell would well, you call Nilfgaard? The Holy I'm Roman Empire? The Ro on the dwarf elder's leash. Why am I not surprised? Dwarf. Well, dwarves don't let humans into Mahakam. Why have we got to let them into our homes? Because they're the reason your homes are still standing. Ha! 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 Beautifully knocked those racist noblickers do not pig. Here, here, dear queen. Ha! 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 I'll be honest, the, you know, this is, this is, this might sound amusing to some people, but I genuinely, legitimately despise the Skoyatel. Yorvef, Yavin, I'd execute every single last one of them if I could. Acts of mercy notwithstanding, I agree with Rayla far more so than I've been letting on in this playthrough. At the same time, the treatment of the elder races is one of the main reasons why precisely I side with Nilfgaard in The Witcher 3 because I see no fucking moral equivalency I mean for all the stuff Nilfgaard does and just keep in mind the Northern Realms are in their own right way responsible for feral some fairly brutal wars and massacres and programs Nilfgaard is morally superior at the end of the day versus the Northern Realms. And if you want to dispute that, I'd like to point out that the, one of the main guys who's responsible for the Northern Realms victory in The Witcher 3 is fucking Radovid. Yeah. Yeah, the guy burning mages at the stake. Non-humans too. Why not? Religious bigotry. Seems to me... Seems to me, when it comes to the issue of religion, and I, I feel that a lot of people have kind of missed the point, haven't they? I mean, I mentioned this because I don't think there is, there are many religions that are not founded on the principles of treating others well, of caring about other human beings, Christianity, Islam, you name it. And yet, it seems that radicals have perverted that. Anyway. And this certainly applies to the religions of the Witcher series as well. Well, specifically the Eternal Fire. A new order. They stood ready to defend it. Well, ah. again and again and again. Ah. Must be an important lesson in ah. this. But what? Tomorrow I'll drink with our forefathers. Army's a waste of time for one like me. As you wish, my lady. I'm a All right, an ambassador. Munchy, munchy. Nice, Ted up to. You know what? I'm just fucking passing. There's no reason to waste my cards after this. Your turn, Elf Guardian. Eh! Expected. Maybe I could have gotten him to come in more cards. Maybe.
Wait, I couldn't. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, that was a bad move. I live to serve you. Oh, oh, Lady Margarita told us of this. Mm -hmm. Go on, then, Kazel. Okay. Left, right, left, right. Hundred and one, hundred and two, hundred and three. It's not too late to walk away. I'm afraid it is a bit too late. Again and again and again. Ha! Give me a time. Oh! Army's a waste of time for one like me. They might win. They might not. Discipline. That is what you folk lack. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Well, I'm in a better position than they are. <laughs> <laughs> what with the dark mirror and all that? Hundred and fifty-two. 154 Left, right, left, right ha! Okay As good as dead, that lot Think about slings, they hide well Hey I never miss. Okay. I think you'll really like this one. <laughs> one more. Pays late again. Mm. Another victory. Okay. I'm sure they'll love what I'm about to do. Some recruits. Wood, gold, wood, gold. Yeah, a fair price, why not? I have the coin anyway. Damn. Guess that's another camp, right? Whoa. Well, there we go. I don't need extra coin, by the way.
What the Zigrins were exiled? What the? As the Lyrians passed a cemetery marching along its ivy-covered wall, they heard mourners wailing pitifully to a priestess's moving song. The soldiers dutifully lowered their heads. Their minds sought out fallen comrades and kin, and they wondered whom else the war would yet claim. <clears throat> Listen, said Gascon, stirring me from her own meditation. I think I'll veer off for a bit. What for? To offer your condolences? In a manner of speaking. But just go on. I'll rejoin you soon. Meave nodded in agreement, then made as if to ride on. Yet Gascon had hardly entered the cemetery when the Queen turned and followed. Gascon quickly realized he was not alone. Ah, oh, Meave. Had I been plotting to do you no good, I'd not have announced I was sneaking off to do it. What do you mean? Come now, Meave, don't play the fool. You don't trust me, so you followed. Probably thought I'd commune with Epdahi in some crypt. Nay, better, the Conclave of Mages. Well, rest assured then. For if I truly had something I wanted to conceal, I dare say you'd not have noticed me slip off. If I truly suspected something nefarious, I'd have dispatched my scouts, not followed you alone. Which begs the question, why'd you follow? Why are you here? Because you've not been yourself. You've been acting strangely. And that gives you the right to spy on me? Gascon, I've grown used to you bending the rules of decorum, but now you overstep, sir. You overstep. Oh, will you have me flogged? Hold your tongue, sir, or I shall indeed. Splendid. Now tell me why you've come here. <sighs> if you absolutely must know, then follow me. Gascon led me through the ruins of a mausoleum past its decapitated statues, past ancient gravestones effaced, past sarcophagi smashed to pieces. Whose is it? Could it be... Yes, Maeve. My family's vault. The Brossards. The Brossards? Wait. The Brossards? The very same. An error, most certainly. We paid dearly for it. Reginald had no mercy, decimated the family. As you can see, didn't even spare the dead. I was outside, away from the house. It is the only reason I survived was eight at the time, stripped of title and home. Well, I'm sure you can guess the rest. Frankly, do my damnedest not to think on it. But the wall, the cemetery, seeing them awoke all the old demons. Your crest, I seem to recall a pointer. Ah, <sighs> the Duke of Dogs, now I understand. The Brossard's trial I remember well. Reginald was angry. He prodded and pushed. Too far, the sentence was cruel, spiteful. I felt it all, but said nothing. I'm so very, very sorry, Gascon. Ah, water under the bridge. And the past's a thing none of us can change. The past, no, but the present? I could rebuild your family's tomb. All deserve to rest in peace. Maeve, the war nears its end days now and you'll have more urgent expenses. So I shall pay for this now. I'm grateful, Gascon, and indebted, vastly. Let me do this. Let me pay my debt in part, at least. I thank you. Gascon remained silent the rest of the day. When the force halted for the night, he sat secluded in his tent. But by the morn, he was his witty, mirthful self again. His family's final resting place would be returned to its former glory. This he knew, and it seemed to lift a weight from his mind. He could now reconcile with his family's tragic past.
I see. Good mother. Oh, move that candle. Move that candle. All right. Well, such is the way of things, right? <laughs> Besides, I've got a lot of gold. I'm not even kidding here. I was like, I'm swimming in it. I have nothing to do with all the gold, all the troops, or all the lumber. I've got an old upgrade. So it's like, oh, you could get new cards. I suppose, but what would I do with them? Therein lies the issue. Puzzle? What is this? A gravekeeper? I guess. Probably. Well, I'll get to Villem in just a moment. <laughs> Banish all the enemy guys before <laughs> all of yours are banished. Okay, I screw that one up. Yeah, not enough. My memory is poor. At least with regards to this.
Damn it. Well, it's part luck, part memorization, right? so far gas con damn it all it's a bit annoying isn't it but there are cards to be gained from this there are rewards <laughs> Trial and error. Yeah, again.
Alright, at long last. Took a while, but done. All for this. Well, another city lies ahead, I guess. Oh, nothing that can be done about that. Can't flank around. I need to fight my way through the North Guardians.
Ha! <laughs> Army's a waste of time for one like me. All right then. Scrubbing duty again? Oh, gods. Oh! One bolt's all I need. You must sweat like a swine in that jacket. All right. Yo. New orders? No? Ah. of an eye from half a league away. Yep. Hey. Well, an elf guardian scout. He's gone. Wasn't even that hard. Left, right, left, right. The morrow I'll drink with our forefathers. Give me a target. All right then. Uh -huh. El Hertha. Well, I'll just put the Strace Cavalry. Yes. Let's see what they've got. Now, how did that incantation go? Not going too badly. Discipline. That is what you folk lack. My prescription. A bit of bloodletting. Well. That was one round. Important lesson in this, but what? No lesson, just okay. fight. Hmm, mm. a highly curious case. Abolisti, your command. Ha! Again and again and again. A grotto doom anime est. Space est. Oh, oh, Lady Margarita told us of this. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Uh. 
All right, this is our. Okay. Victory. Bridge. Let's see. Well, not here, so it doesn't matter right now. But there's a bridge somewhere. Wait, where is it? Uh, I can see this sort this out later. Yep. More troops for Meave's army. The Devil's Tower. We draw near, Your Grace. No sign of villain yet, far as I can see. Unsurprising. Prompt he never was. The Queen had chosen to meet Willem at Devil's Tower, and not without purpose. The structure stood on an aisle, so no foe could approach without first exposing themselves on a narrow bridge. The aisle had little vegetation midst which to conceal a large force. A small unit could evade detection. Altogether, not much to fear. No escorts were your terms, began Gascon, with a hint of mischief. But better safe than sorry, I always say. What are you suggesting? Yours truly, and four chaps, behind the walls. Give a signal, any signal, and we'll leap to your side. Meave struggled with her conscience. There was no honor in Gascon's plan, but prudence, certainly. In the end, she nodded in agreement, though not without compunction. Willem arrived soon after. The heavily armored cavalry he had in tow clearly there to boost his courage. He left them at the foot of the bridge and rode across alone. A stiff wind from the river nearly made off with his ermine fur cloak. Willem and the mother who'd borne him stood face to face. They gazed into each other's eyes, waiting to see who would look away first. When neither did, Meave broke the silence. Time flies, and I have a kingdom to liberate. No need to drag this out. What's this about? Tell me. I thought my messenger already did. Oh, he did. And how? Willem I wishes to arrange a truce. Only, Willem I is in no position to parley on an equal footing. Willem I can, at most, offer his unconditional surrender because Willem I's losing this war. Yes, Mother. I am. And I see that by losing, I've at last made you content. Willem, we do not meet as mother and son. We meet only as leaders of two armies at war. Can you separate the two? Truly? I must. If only not to lose my mind. I see. Then let us parley. I'm losing, you say. And you're right. But I haven't lost yet. And have no intention to surrender. I am ready, however, to renounce my fealty to the Empire and pledge my forces to you. As long as you fulfill my conditions. Mm-hmm. Let me hear them. First, you will not rescind the reforms I've authorized already, any of them. Second, you will guarantee both my safety and that of my advisors. Third, I shall remain your heir and next in line for the throne. Impudent child. Insolent beyond all measure. Well, I had to try. Goodbye, Mother. And may you... Hold. I didn't say I reject them. 
It's come my turn to listen. You're impertinent, Willem. As you should be. Any future king must be certain of himself and his judgments. Rely on none but himself. I... thank you. I never suspected... I'm not done. Time now you heard my conditions. You shall remove crown and royal cloak. You shall labor from dawn till dusk. And you shall fight at the fore in every battle. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, Your Majesty. It's settled then. Now the road beckons. Willem bowed, turned and walked away. Meave followed, still angry, though she could not stifle a smile. Soon thereafter, Meave's army set out towards Rivia Castle. It would not be long now before the decisive battle. Well... How do you fare, my son? My advisers, have you met them? I certainly tried, but they've no wish to speak with me. Begin to mumble when I draw near. Even the ridiculously reverent Count Reynard. Well, suspicion must still grip their minds. And for good reason, you must admit. Yes. I've got a lot of work ahead of me, that's plain to see. Hmm. And you shall get to it straight away. As soon as we've spoken. Your reforms. Tell me about them. You insist that I not repeal them. They must be a source of pride. Mother, why must you mock me? If you wish, I shall tell you of my decrees, gladly so. Yet not dare you scoff them and ridicule me. You're right, Willem. I'm sorry. That was unfair. I'm willing to hear you out. I began by clarifying key aspects of the rights of spoil and staple. Meave listened intently and with rising interest. With her son's every word, her skepticism waned, giving way to swelling pride. And then's my decision to revoke Spala's trade privileges. You stand quite- There are few things I enjoy less than admitting I was wrong. We'll go over it all again, Willem, in detail, when peace comes, at a meeting of the Council of Peers. General Dahi, you must tell me more about him. I think it wise to know one's foes. Actually, Mother, he reminds me of you, in many ways. Truly? You're serious? Mm-hmm. He's proud, confident, and positively loathes compromise. I'll take that as a compliment. But do we differ in any way? I mean, besides the beard. Contempt. He behaves as though he sees in us a different, lower race, the way some elves do. All the North he treats as a wilderness to be tamed, to be broken. I saw this in Edurn. I know what you speak of. But I won't allow him to do anything of the sort. Mother, I know Nilfgaard has not defeated you in battle. I know you've gone from one victory to the next, but I beg you, don't underestimate him. He's prepared to do anything, literally, to win. I wanted to thank you. But whatever for? For your courage in believing we could reconcile. For extending a hand and helping all this fall into place. I... I wouldn't have done so. Ever. I would have fought it to the bitter end. Mother, I understand. If we hadn't... Well, what might have happened? I don't even want to think about it. Then don't, please. Let's just leave this all behind us. It's the past. We shall speak later, my son. Yes, Your Grace? It's time I... Alright. Well, Willem joined my side. For all the wharf that brings me. What does he do as a card? This is a curious point. When Meave uses her ability, move Prince Willem and all units with the same power to the opposite. I guess. Can you use him? Sure, why not? Okay. Right, 
we have to go there. But getting there is not going to be a, some cakewalk. Oh, I suppose it could have been worse. Hmm. Yeah, I need to check uh, two out of six. All right. Well, Christine Senya. <laughs>